What's happening guys, Keith here with your Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory 2018 review video. So it is Monday morning right now and I am completely exhausted. I got home probably about 1.30, 2 o'clock last night, but what a fantastic experience. This was my first Impact Wrestling show, probably my favorite live experience that I've had and I've been to a handful of wrestling shows, but just... Thumbs up to Impact Wrestling for a fantastic show last night. The atmosphere was great. The crowd was great. It, it was just an all-around great experience. Um, however, standing for about five hours was uh, not the the best thing. Um, there was really no uh, notification on what time the doors open. I tried to reach out to a few people but never got an answer, and I saw a bunch of other people asking on Twitter as well. Uh, so we got there at about 6.30, uh, there was probably about 100 people in line already. Uh, we parked and walked up, and then I think we got in about 7, 7.15. Um, as we were reaching the door, they were telling us at that point that the rest was standing room only, and as we got in, there was a ton of people, and I was like, ah, crap. You know, being a short guy myself, so standing room only isn't the, uh, the greatest thing for me, but I was actually able to uh, get by with the uh, hard cam, underneath like the overhang area right in front of the merch table so we had really good uh seats or seats just a really good view of the show it was me my girlfriend and uh my buddy from work so we were able to find a good spot thankfully um because you could either stand kind of by the bar or that area or upstairs where the vip lounge was but that was a little tough to see um but yeah no uh just a fantastic experience it just felt so intimate like I saw Josh Matthews walking around a handful of times. I said hi to him. Scott Demore, same thing. Jimmy Jacobs. A bunch of wrestlers were just hanging out throughout the night. Like I saw Ace Austin multiple times. He was sitting down right in front of me. Um, yeah, it just it just felt really cool. Ed Nordholm was there. He was just hanging out with what I'm guessing was his wife. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was a lot of fun. Like I said, my favorite live experience. And the show really met my expectations we did not get any huge surprises but they didn't really need them to be honest uh so we had a opening match of willie mack and rich swan versus matt seidel and ethan page great match to start the show crowd was super into it everybody loved to see willie mack and man he was incredible in the ring i've seen him wrestle a couple of times but he looked really great um but like i said he got such a good reaction uh, we did see a nice standing moonsault from him. Um, but yeah, he can really go, and he's going to be a great addition to the Impact roster already. And Ethan Page himself was really good, too. Um, I like what I saw from him, since we saw very little when he played Chandler Park. Uh, he pulled out a beautiful Swanton Bomb. And then the ending sequence was really good, too. Because, uh, oh no, before that, we hit, uh, saw Seidel hit a jump, uh, standing Hurricane Rana on uh, Rich Swan, who was sitting on the top rope. And Rich Swan flew and then hit Ethan Page with a Hurricane Rana himself. It was just an incredible spot. Um, the finish saw Willie Mack hit a stunner on Ethan Page. Matt Seidel hit a swinging neckbreaker on Willie Mack. And then Swan hit a handspring cutter and the Phoenix Splash for the win. So, like I said, a great match to open the show up. Crowd was super into it. I really enjoyed it. I think we got two fantastic additions to the roster in Ethan Page and Willie Mack. And Rich Swan and Matt Seidel looked great, too. Um, so, yeah, maybe we will see both of these men or both of these teams continue to stay together. That would de definitely help revive the uh, tag division as it's been lacking a lot lately. Um, after the match, I guess they had two open seats, so Willie Mack got on the mic and wanted everybody to be super loud, and whoever was the loudest, he gave them the seats, so they did that, which was cool. Then we get a backstage segment with uh, Conan getting attacked backstage by King. He tells LAX that he's going to be out tonight, and they have to handle business on their own. Um, so yeah, this was on that big screen where the Tron was. They showed all the videos there. Um, they also had a bunch of uh, TV screens over in the bar area where... Uh, you were able to watch it. So if you weren't able to catch something, like there were points where I saw perfectly through the center of the ring, but on both sides of the, uh, between the uh, the ring and the guardrail, it was a little tough to see. So I could just look over and see the TV screens. Um, then up next, we had uh, Eli Drake's open challenge. Eli got a fantastic reaction. Everybody was glad to see him. 
He came down, ran down the New York Giants. Apparently, at least one of the, their players was there in the crowd, which he gets involved later on. Um, my buddy who was there with me has never seen Eli Drake really before. I mean, he's caught impact here and there. But uh, he was really impressed with his work, so it's always good to see. Um, and then his mystery opponent, James Ellsworth. Yeah, this got a groan from the crowd. Uh, this led to F.U. Ellsworth chants. Um, and then Eli said, you're not from New York, you're from Maryland. And he's like, well, well, I dated a girl from Staten Island, and I stayed in her basement. And Eli's like, whatever. And then they had their match. Eli put him away pretty quickly with a gravy train. And then Eli grabs the mic and says, you know what, I was looking for uh, Hall of Fame quality talent here. That brings out Abyss. He comes out. They battle back and forth. Abyss hits a black hole slam. Eli's laid out in the ring. Abyss goes outside, grabs a table, brings it in the ring, and then choke slams Eli through the table. So, yeah, this was kind of a, a low point in terms of they kind of missed an opportunity here for Eli Drake. It, it just still seems like they have no idea what they're doing with him, which is really a shame because especially the crowd reaction he got, he's so good on the mic. He's good in the ring, too. Um, but at least he did make the pay-per-view, unlike Slammiversary, so... I guess you got to look at the positives in one way or another. Um, so up next, we had the Knockouts Championship match. Tessa Blanchard versus the returning Taya Valkyrie. Uh, I really enjoyed this match. Very good back and forth. Uh, very even. Taya looked fantastic since returning. We've, we've seen her probably six months ago. It was right after Redemption she, since we've last seen her. Um, Taya hit a moonsault, got a two count. Uh, she locks Tessa into a submission. Tessa's going to grab the bottom rope. She starts grabbing the ring skirt, pulls it into the ring. Uh, I think she eventually gets to the bottom rope. Uh, Taya sets up to the road to Valhalla, hits it, goes for the cover. Ref's distracted, getting the ring skirt back out. Goes to count, only gets a two count. Taya goes for it again. Um, Tessa puts her down with the buzzsaw, and then Taya kicks out at two there. I was surprised about that one. Um, and... Eventually, Tessa hits the Magnum, which is basically jumping off the top rope and hitting a code breaker, and she picks up the victory. So, I mean, there was definitely it definitely seemed like uh, Taya could have pulled that one out with the uh, after hitting her finisher, but they played it well. I would assume that this feud is not over with. I think we're going to actually get a proper feud moving forward. I don't see what else they could do. Taya could say, you know, I would have beat you had this not happened, or so on and so forth. So, good, solid match. I enjoyed it. Um, up next, we had Moose versus Eddie Edwards. Moose had his special entrance, had a couple of ladies accompany him to the ring. Um, about two minutes into the match, I think Eddie went outside to grab a kendo stick. Killer Cross was in the crowd. He attacks Eddie. Ref calls for the bell. Match gets thrown out. Um... Killer Cross gets in the ring with Moose. They beat down Eddie Edwards. Tommy Dreamer comes out and says, you know, New York's a bunch of crazy son of a bitches. They don't want this to end this way. So they restart it, and we have a tag match. Uh, but this was more of a brawl than anything. I mean, each man kind of got their shots in, so to speak. Um, Moose did end up getting into a shoving match with one of the New York Giants players who was in the crowd. That was a good spot. Um, we did get a really good back and forth between Moose and Edwards. I think they were chopping back and forth. Uh, Moose tries to take Eddie's head off with a kendo stick. Eddie ducks, rolls up Moose, and gets the three count. After the match, Eddie did receive a powerbomb onto the apron, courtesy of Moose and Killer Cross. Um, this was really my only match that I didn't predict. Pretty much all the other matches I got right. I mean, minus the Eli Drake challenge, but that was a mystery, so whatever. Um... I don't know if this match really did anything for anybody outside of getting Killer Cross on the card. I mean, it was always good to see Tommy Dreamer, but it was just uh, disappointing that it came at the price of a singles match between Moose and Edwards, which they have built a decent feud up. I don't think this is going to end. Uh, this is probably going to continue on, so hopefully we will get a proper match between the two of them in the future. Um, then we had the uh, six-man tag, OVE, Sammy Callahan, Dave, and Jay Chris versus Brian Cage, Pentagon, and Phoenix. Uh, this match was so much fun. The crowd was really into it, just spot after spot. Um, I don't think they ever explained what OVE rules were. It seemed like they were doing lucha rules where 
the person would get knocked down, roll out of the ring, someone else came in, and then another point it was just like a six-man tornado tag. But regardless, this match was so much fun. There were so many good, cool spots. We did see Phoenix hit that cutter from him on the entrance ramp, jumping over the top rope. I don't remember. I think he hit it on one of the Chris brothers. Oh, no, it was Callahan. Um, that got a great reaction from the crowd. Uh, we saw Brian Cage hit a fallaway slam on both Chris brothers. Uh, he caught one of the Chris brothers in a suplex position on the outside of the ring, almost dumping him into the crowd. Um, we did get a botch spot where Phoenix was on Pentagon's shoulders. Jay Chris went up onto the top turnbuckle to hit a flying cutter. I guess they just miscommunicated, and uh, one of them landed on Dave down below. It, it wasn't a pretty spot. It would have been really cool had they gotten it done properly. Uh, eventually Cage finds himself all alone with all three members of OVE. There, he's just no-selling any of it. Uh, they even hit an all-seeing eye, go for the pin. Cage kicks out at one. Um, then they start berating Cage with a bunch of kicks. Sammy hits a pile driver on Cage and gets the victory. So this was pretty big that this was the first time that Brian Cage has been pinned and it coming at the hands of Sammy Callahan. Fantastic. I'm so glad OV won this match. They really deserved to get a big victory here. And, I mean, it was only a six-man tag, so it wasn't anything huge. Definitely possible that Cage versus Callahan is a feud that comes up for the X Division Championship. Um, I would assume that Cage will eventually move on to the world title picture somewhat in the uh, foreseeable future. And uh, I think Callahan would do good as X Division Champion. But we will see. We will see. Things could change. I don't know what's next for the Lucha Brothers. Um, but, yeah. Solid match overall. Then we had LAX versus the OGs in a concrete jungle death match. So, before this match got underway, I don't know what was going on on the actual stream. It took them a little while to remove the ring, uh, the padding, and the turnbuckle covers and everything like that. They had just wooden planks. That was it. So LAX had a special entrance, which included about 20 people. They get in the ring. They're jumping around, going crazy. This did not do anything positive for those wooden boards because they started moving all over. Um, like When the match first started, Ref Riley was just trying to get everything in position. He constantly did that without the match. Uh, this was so dangerous. Uh, like I said, the boards would just keep constantly moving, and it looked like somebody was eventually going to fall through it. There were so many times when I was like, oh, my God, please don't, please don't. Um, we did see Hernandez get busted open earlier, early on in the match. I'm guessing it was probably from one of the garbage can lids. Hernandez hits a border toss on Homicide over the top rope to LAX on the outside. That was a really cool spot. Ortiz gets pounced through a table by Hernandez. Um, definitely one of the scariest spots was when uh, LAX hit a double superplex on Hernandez into the middle of the ring. Just the sound it made was, I cannot imagine how bad that would have felt on your back. Uh, Hernandez is a hell of a tough guy. Um, Conan comes out with a sock full of quarters. He takes out Homicide, and then he takes out Hernandez. Uh, he puts King through a table, and then LAX hits the street sweeper on King, for the victory, again, not a pretty spot on the exposed wood. Um, it's it's just crazy, and we saw the destruction from Slammiversary between all these, uh, at least the four men, but uh, they still have two nights of tapings after this, so uh, I don't know how they're going to be in 100%. I don't know if we're even going to see Hernandez and Homicide, uh, but I'm very glad that no one got hurt in this match. Not a huge surprise that LAX went over. They definitely deserve to win this. They are the tag team champions. And uh, I would assume this is the end of the feud. I just wonder what this leaves for King to do and possibly the OGs. Um, will we see LAX finally go into a tag title feud with somebody, maybe with Matt Seidel and Ethan Page, someone like that? Um, but time will tell. But like I said, just glad that nobody got hurt in this match. Um, and while Impact officials were uh, putting the ring back together, this is when they played the Alley video, which was really smart. So we got to watch this on the big screen as well. Um, I really enjoyed this. Uh, so Alley goes into the Undead Realm. Oh, by the way, they were struggling so much to get the ring put back together. There was one board that just wouldn't go down. I was like, oh, this is not good. Um, but yeah, she goes into the Undead Realm. She ends up stabbing a bunch of the Undead Bridesmaids. She ends up finally finding Sue Young. They go back and forth. 
Eventually, Ali stabs her in the neck. She finds Kira, releases her from the coffin. They're going to try and go back through to the, to the normal world, and James Mitchell pops up and is like, I said, I didn't say anything about leaving. I just said I could help you get here. Um, at this point, we see Soo Young and the bridesmaids come up, and uh, Ali and Kiera are trying to make their way out. Roseberry makes her return, which got probably the biggest reaction of the night. Everybody was super happy to see her. Uh, we see Rosemary and Soo Young have like a cosmic battle with uh, all types of special effects, which uh, got a, bu- a chuckle from a bunch of people because it was just kind of ridiculous, but it was it was cool. I really liked the way they did it. Um, Kira and Allie are eventually able to leave, get back to the real world, but end up leaving Rosemary behind in the process, so they both make it through the ca- coffin. Allie and Kiera are there. Allie wants to go back to save her. Kiera says, no, everything is going to be okay. And then we hear Allie say in a demonic voice, it is not okay. So I'm interested to see where they go with this. Um, we could see a dark side Allie completely. Um, but yeah, no, it was fun. It was good. I liked how they put this on the pay-per-view. Um, definitely, definitely a cool video. I enjoyed it. I think they did a good job here. I always like their video so that they've done with Sue Young and like this out of world experience. And that brings us to the main event, Austin Aries defending the Impact World Championship against Johnny Impact. Um, just the events that led up to this match, we knew we were in for something special. Uh, Aries came out with Killer Cross and Moose. Johnny had Taya in his corner. I mean, they just generally looked like they hated each other. They just were brawling, a lot of technical ground wrestling. Uh, we did see a beautiful spot on the outside of the ring where uh, Aries is running toward Johnny Impact. Johnny Impact jumps up, one foot on the apron, one foot on the guardrail. With Aries behind him, he hits a moonsault onto Aries. Just a beautiful spot. They go back and forth for quite some time. Just so much intensity from both these men. Uh, Johnny hits a Spanish fly off the top rope. Aries hits a Death Valley driver on the apron. Rolls Johnny in, hits a 450 splash, only gets a two count. Impact hits Starship Pain. Aries is able to get his foot on the bottom rope. Aries hits a Roaring Elbow plus a Brain Buster. Impact ends up getting his foot on the bottom rope after I think the referee was going down for three. Aries takes Taya out with a suicide dive. This looked brutal. It was just... You knew it was going to happen, but just the impact, it it was so well executed. Um, Johnny capitalizes on Aries being distracted by Taya. He hits a kick. And a brain buster of his own. Hit Starship Pain. New champion, Johnny Impact. Not a huge surprise here. I kind of expected it to happen. Um, had Aries retained the title, then I would have expected maybe someone to come out or debut or something like that. Uh, but right after the match, Aries no sells a finish, jumps up. He looks up top to where I guess the commentary table was. The VIP section was up there too. And I think he said, Really? Are you kidding me? He flips everyone off, including the people up top and the crowd, and then just leaves. Everyone was just completely confused at this point. Um, everybody was kind of just guessing if Austin Aries had quit the company, if this was like a screw job type thing. Um, Johnny celebrated his title win with Taya, and then the show ends. But just wow. I Like I said in the beginning, I just had so much fun at the event, minus standing for all those hours, because at one point it was like three hours into the show, and I was like, I should probably bend my knees. At that point, I was like, I can't. Um, But regardless, if it was a work or a shoot with Austin Aries, um, it should definitely help get people to tune in on Thursday for Impact, which we will get a double showing of, one at 8 and then a replay at 10 p.m., because next week they go to that 10 p.m. slot, which screws up everything, but hopefully uh, that changes. Um, they've really been able to blur the lines between work and shoot. I give them all kinds of credit for that. Great job for Impact. I forgot to mention that we did see um, Impact is going back to Nashville, Tennessee. They said they're going back to their roots. I believe that is the January tapings, which are going to take place. So that's awesome right there. Glad to see them sticking around in the U.S. from New York to Vegas to Nashville, back to their roots, so to speak. So I would assume they'll probably use the same arena that they used in the asylum. I think that's what they said. Um, But yeah, I had such a fantastic time. They gave us some cool stuff. I got a uh, Bound for Glory cozy, uh, Bound for Glory pen, all thanks to Comda.com, which we did see their logo in the middle of the ring. Um, 
yeah, if anything, the finish really makes impact on Thursday a must-see. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, let me know what you thought about it. Drop something in the comments section below. Thanks for checking out my video. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.